So let, let's take a closer look, a little bit of a reflection time on what a Diels Alder is and uh, other reactions that are similar to a Diels Alder. So here is a diene, there is a dienophile, and if you really look at what's going on in a Diels Alder reaction, you have four pi electrons. That's four electrons in pi bonds. We have two pi bonds, two electrons each, it's four electrons. And the dienophile is two pi electrons. It's simply a pi bond. Pi bond contains two electrons. It's two pi electrons. These, as we know, react together um, to make a new system, a ring. Um, this is, uh, we have really converted pi bonds to sigma bonds. And therefore, when we get rid of pi bonds, we call those addition reactions. So this is an example of an addition. And we're going to make a ring. So um, we call this whole process together a cycloaddition. Great. And of course, it's not any cycloaddition. It is a Diels-Alder cycloaddition. Fantastic. So we understand kind of the, the terminology around this reaction we've learned about, the Diels-Alder cycloaddition. As it turns out, there are other cycloadditions beyond the Diels-Alder reaction. And how, but they're very similar to the Diels Alder because they also involve a, a, a species, it's not a diene, but a species that has four pi electrons reacting with a species that has two pi electrons. So let's draw out this mysterious species that has four pi electrons. Now I'm going to draw it with a little bit different perspective so we can see the p orbitals and the pi bonds, but I'm going to have just three hypothetical atoms, A, B, and C. And uh, I'm going to say that A and B are doubly bonded to one another, so they have overlapping p orbitals. And of course, if it's a double bond, we have two electrons in here. And then C is not going to be part of a double bond. It's simply going to have a p orbital, and that p orbital is going to have a lone pair. So this, if you look at this thing, whatever we're going to call it, it has four pi electrons, four, four electrons in conjugated, connected p orbitals. So really, it is a whole lot like our diene up here. Now, what is this going to react with? It's going to react with another alkene. And of course, an alkene, uh, just like our dienophile, has two pi electrons. I don't want to get too specific, but if we could come up with such a species like this, then when it reacted with the dienophile, it wouldn't make a six-membered ring, it would make a five-membered ring. It would look something like this, and you know, we can number our dienophile carbons, or that's not really a dienophile, but number those carbons that come from the two pi electron piece, and we would get this. And this is this would also be a reaction that that uh, converts pi bonds to sigma bonds, so it's an addition. We're making a ring, so this would be a cycloaddition. Now, as it turns out, this type of cycloaddition is not part of the Diels-Alder reaction. It was developed by a scientist named Huisken, and Huisken developed this, uh, explored this whole series of reactions. And so, this is what, uh, something we're going to talk about in later videos. But there, there are more cycloadditions than just the Diels Alder cycloaddition. And actually, if you study chemistry for very long, you're going to run into these other types of cycloadditions. And actually, they're, they're pretty prominently featured in research today.